So one of the things you're going to quickly realize in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is you are going to need a lot more space for your weapons, bows, uh, shields, and different things like that because you're going to be finding a lot in the world and you're going to want to pick them all up. So I'm going to show you guys how to increase your stash for your weapons, your shields, and your bows in this video. Uh, it has to do with Korok seeds as per usual, those tiny little golden poops. And yes, they are golden poop. So if you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more. And without further ado, my friends, let's go ahead and jump into this. First things first, I'm going to show you guys all the different Korok puzzles that are available in the game so you guys understand what to look for to get these Korok seeds and then I'll show you guys how to uh, go ahead and cash them in for increased weapon stash. All right, so for the first Korok seed, uh, this is in no specific order, you'll see these kind of uh, pinwheels. If you stand on the tree stump that there's a pinwheel or whatever it is, it'll uh, have these targets that kind of pop up. Just shoot all, all the targets with your bow and arrow. Uh, once you get all of them, a Korok will spawn and it's that simple. The second one, uh, they'll be hidden under random rocks throughout Hyrule. So just pick up a rock, you might find a Korok underneath, and that'll be the second kind of way to find Koroks. And then we got the third one, which is kind of similar. You're going to find piles of leaves. So you're going to have to burn them or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and burn this pile. Underneath there'll be a Korok, usually there's going to be a rock they have to pick up underneath, and then there's a Korok under that, uh, so pile of, uh, pile of leaves, and then under that uh, you'll find a Korok there as well. So that's the third one, and uh, we'll move on to the fourth one. So the fourth kind is uh, a flower. If you see a flower like this, uh, go ahead and uh, basically touch it, and it's going to spawn a flower in a different location, and then another location, and another, and another. Just follow the path until you get to the very end, where there's going to be a white flower finally instead of yellow, and that white flower is going to spawn the Korok. That's that simple. That's going to be the fourth one. Moving on to the fifth one, there's going to be some like hidden archery. Uh, so just random balloons kind of that you'll find in, in kind of hidden places. Go ahead and shoot it and it will spawn a Korok. Number six, you're going to see these moving sparks kind of uh, around on the ground in certain places. Go chase after it. Push A to interact with it, and that'll spawn a Korok for you. Next one is a ball and chain. Sometimes you'll find these kind of uh, balls uh, on a chain. You're going to basically uh, move it to where you can actually go ahead and whack it, and then hit it with something. I mean, I guess you could shoot it with an arrow. I think technically I didn't have to really pull it out. But anyways, that's the other way to get a Korok seed. This one's new uh, to Tears of the Kingdom that was not in Breath of the Wild. You're going to have to reunite some friends. So whenever you talk to one of these guys, they're very tired and they'll say, hey, there's a smoke signal my friend is sending over there, sending over there, but I can't get there. Uh, now, it's worth noting using Ultra Hand, you can attach them to things so they don't fall off. So in this case, I'm attaching it to a raft. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm just going to speed up this clip. I wasn't really sure what to do here because the water was moving downstream. So I just kind of uh, tossed them over. I made him float a little bit, and then I just brought him up to his friend, and it was that simple. So you're just going to drop him beside his friend. You're going to go talk to them after, and you're going to get two Korok seeds because there's two Koroks in this situation. So two for the price of one. Uh, I really love that one uh, because you get double. Next one is going to be these tree stumps you're going to find that have a leaf on it. If you stand on it, it's going to spawn this thing, uh, kind of this ring in, a, in, in, in the distance. you got to speed up to it. Uh, before the time runs out, there's kind of those balls that are disappearing in the ring. Uh, so make sure you get to it in time. It's kind of like a race, and uh, you'll be good to go. Quark will spawn. Next one is going to be these uh, rocks. You'll see that there's like a circle of rocks with one missing. There should be a rock nearby. Sometimes the rock might be a little bit further. You just got to put it in a perfect circle. If you don't place it right, it's not going to spawn. But once you get it right, you'll see it'll spawn the Korok, and uh, you'll be good to go. All right, so that's number 10. Let's move on to number 11. Sometimes you'll find these kind of circles of lily pads uh, in the water just dive into it and uh, it'll spawn a Korok so it's really that simple you ever see those make sure you dive into the ring from uh, somewhere up high the next one is going to be these puzzle blocks it's going to be the last one whenever you see these kind of blocks uh, you basically just got to piece it together like a puzzle you just slot it in so it uh, makes a perfect square block and uh, it's going to spawn a Korok and it's uh, really that simple. So now that you got all the Koroks and you see how to do all the puzzles, we got to go cash them in somewhere and that is to find Hestu, the big kind of Korok guy. So the first location is going to be over here uh, in this area. Now I had already started this off. 
Uh, but basically, he has some concerns when you find him. So what's going to happen is there's a couple trees uh, close by. So this is before I filled out the map. But you can see he's just kind of northwest of uh, Hyrule, central Hyrule area. Uh, so you can see he's just kind of over here on this uh, location. And uh, basically, he doesn't have any Koroks. And um, what happens, I've already done it, but what happens is there's two trees close by that basically come to life. He's really scared of. He won't talk to you until you defeat them. So just go up to them, uh, defeat the trees, use like an axe or something. And uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have the gameplay of that. But uh, anyways, defeat the two trees. And then once you defeat the two trees, you can go back and talk to him and he'll actually uh, allow you to uh, give him some Koroks. So once you do that, you can basically just give him Koroks. You can choose whether you want to increase a weapon stash, a bow stash, uh, if you want to increase your uh, shield stash. Uh, it's going to start off by only costing like one Korok per up for, for the you know, first upgrades, and it's going to be like two and then three, and it's going to get more and more and more the, the more you increase your stash for a particular category. Uh, so again, you could increase it, I think, like two times at this location, but after that, he's going to move location. So I'll show you guys where the second location is going to be for Hestu in order to redeem these Korok seeds. All right, so the second location is going to be over in the central area at Lookout Landing. You would have unlocked this very, very early in the game. We're going to be uh, spawning from the Skyview Tower, and we're going to be going directly, diagonally across. So I got a little bit lost here for a second. I can remember where he was because he wasn't here for me anymore. He's going to be right by this tree. So if you uh, come here, you'll see that Hestu will be spawned uh, here after you initially meet him, and you could redeem more Korok seeds. But there is a third location. So the third and final location is going to be here in Korok Forest. Now, this one gets a little bit tricky because you can't really get here just from going through the forest. You actually have to go from underneath in the depths. So there's a chasm right here at the edge of the Korok Forest. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go down this chasm and don't go where there's water because where there's water, as you can see in the depths, is black, meaning there's a big wall that you can't go through but if you go down here so right here and then you fly a little bit uh, north right here and then you go down here you can make your way over here and right under here there's actually uh, a place right here on Korok Grove where you can go ahead and ascend from the bottom I'll try to throw up a clip on screen I think I have a uh, gameplay of that still uh, on screen but if you want to know exactly how to do all of this, um, it's in my guide for getting the Master Sword. Now, this will not get you the Master Sword yet. There's another step after that, but it'll at least restore, uh, it'll get you here uh, and then restore peace here. Because what happens when you get here, the Deku Tree, he's not well, he's very sick. And you got to go inside and basically uh, do this little fight. So if you basically go up here, you talk to him on this... Uh, on this uh, tree stump right here. And then you drop down to the left here. You go through here. Uh, you go to the back. And then when you go to the far back, this again, this is going to be all like not normal. You're going to drop down there and there's going to be a boss fight. Again, if you want to see how that works, I'll link my uh, Master Sword guide down in the comment section below. Um, it basically, once you do this, you'll be able to get the Master Sword like right after anyways, um, so, which is very, very helpful. But once you restore uh, peace to the Deku Tree, uh, Hestu is going to appear right here, and this is just going to be where he's going to hang out from now on. So he's back to the forest where he was, just like in Breath of the Wild. I think he was over there last time, though. I think he was by that tree in Breath of the Wild. And then you can just go out to him and cash in some more Korok seeds. So that's his third and final location. So that's pretty much it, my friends. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you guys are new for more uh, Tears of the Kingdom and everything else uh, Nintendo. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll do my very best to help you guys out. Like I said, uh, as you kind of go through this... Uh, it's going to cost you more and more Korok seeds per, per upgrade. Uh, so, you know, uh, just keep that in mind. You, you know, you're going to need more and more and more. Uh, I don't know how many Koroks are in the actual game as of right now. I don't know if it's another 900. I don't know if it's less. I don't know if it's more. Um, but what I do know is that at least we can increase our weapon stash. You can see that this one's going to cost me five, for example, because I've increased my weapon stash quite a bit already. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Again, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys soon. Another one. Till then, game on, and thanks for watching.